I don't just talk about other people's stuff, I also make my own. Books in particular. To date, I have four books you can check out on Amazon. Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, Occult Mafia, Emerald of Maddox City, and the short story collection Assorted Absurdities, Tales of Kaiju Punk, and Other Genres. Hop on down to the description for Amazon links to all four books. Enjoy whichever ones you read, and enjoy the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Omni Viewer, and there's a bit of news regarding Gamera Rebirth that I've seen a wide variety of reactions to. Not all of them especially positive reactions. What is the announcement, you may wonder? Well, it has been announced that Gamera Rebirth will be directed and at least partially written by Hiro Yuki Seshita, one third of the team behind the ruination of the Godzilla Polygon trilogy. Yeah, uh, the fact that I said ruination should tell you how good of a job I think he did. And as you can imagine, this has a lot of people on edge. Because the Polygon trilogies are so incredibly bad that even the five people who defended them initially aren't really talking about them anymore. That whole chapter of the Godzilla series just seems to have been swept under the rug and everyone's just moved on. And if they're going to talk about a Godzilla anime these days, they're talking about Singular Point instead. Which still wasn't really that good, but at least was better. But the question now is, should Seshita's involvement have us worried? Some people are saying it should. Other people are saying he deserves another chance. For my own part, my reaction to this news might be expected and yet unexpected at the same time. Now, it does worry me, but not necessarily because the anime movies turned out bad. You see, it's my belief that any director can potentially make a bad movie. It just happens. Even the greats have at least one dud in them. Look through the filmography of your favorite director, I guarantee you there will be at least one movie in that list which is considered a black mark on an otherwise good legacy. Steven Spielberg is one of my favorite directors because he's directed so many great movies. E.T., Jaws, Jurassic Park, the Indiana Jones movies, Schindler's List, but he also directed 1941 and The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Not his best work, either of those. Doesn't mean he's a bad director, he just had a couple of bad movies that he made. And Seshita has directed other stuff in the past. I haven't seen all of his other stuff, mind you. I mean, I've seen bits and pieces of some of the other stuff he worked on with Polygon. I wasn't really that impressed, but that's mostly because the Polygon animation style just wasn't something I could sit through visually. Seshita does hold responsibility for how the Polygon trilogy turned out, mind you, but he doesn't necessarily hold all the responsibility. The juvenile themes that worked their way into all three movies are attributed to Gen Urobuchi, who actually wrote the thing. And Kobun Shizuno, the other director, is, as far as I know, the guy who came up with some of the more controversial changes, like Mechagodzilla City. And we have to factor in that the Toho XX probably did have a say in certain things, largely because they probably wanted Shin Godzilla 2 without actually making Shin Godzilla 2. But all the same, the Polygon trilogy wound up the way it wound up, due to a great number of factors, of which Seshita was one, but he need not necessarily shoulder all of the blame for it. That being said, I am still concerned. But not because Seshita is involved. It's more because of how Seshita behaved in the wake of the Polygon trilogy. In the days leading up to the release of The Planet Eater, the last entry in the Polygon trilogy, there were interviews with Seshita, Shizuno, and Urobuchi about what it was like making the thing, and as the interviews were translated and made their way over to English-speaking markets, one particular quote leapt out at us. That quote was from Seshita himself, saying that he welcomes being bashed by the traditionalists, because that proves beyond a doubt that he made something different. And that 
is the thing that concerns me. Now, granted, I realize that of all the ists that a director can potentially call an audience these days, traditionalist is pretty mild. Even though I find it inaccurate, because all these years later I'm still waiting to hear what exactly makes me a traditionalist as a fan of a series with as much variety as Godzilla. But the actual word itself is not the problem. It's the sentiment behind using it in the first place. Because, essentially, no matter what a director who does this sort of thing calls the audience, the intent is still the same. It's deflection. It's saying that the problem lies not with him, but rather with the audience. You know, the people who didn't make the movie. The application of a collective term, whatever that term may be, essentially puts all detractors into a single group that you can then ignore because you know the problem with them, they just have something wrong about them that prevents them from enjoying something that's so obviously good. They're just traditionalists. They just want the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. They can't handle something that's maybe just a little bit different. What that means is that even if we have legitimate criticisms, like how unlikable the main character is, or how shallow the themes are, or how bad the animation looks, or anything like that, it all gets swept away with everything else, because if you like the movie, you already know what to label the people who disagree with you. Because the director told you what to call them. Now, he could still stand by his work without throwing the audience under the bus. Stephen S. DeKnight did it when he made Pacific Rim Uprising. That movie was lambasted by people, especially those of us who love the first Pacific Rim movie. But what did DeKnight say in response? He just went, oh well, at least I got to make a giant monster movie, I can scratch that one off the list. He didn't attack anyone, he didn't call us istophobes or something, he just said, well at least I had fun, and he's moved on. At least the last time I checked that's what happened, I don't know if he said anything else since then, but then again I just don't bother with Pacific Rim Uprising anymore. So the fact that Seshita felt it was necessary to shift the blame onto the audience, the people that he disappointed, is not something that really endears me to him. Plus, you know, the quote also says that it seems like he's determined to just make something different for the sake of making it different. And as I've said in the past, different is not a synonym for good. It's not a synonym for bad either. It depends on what is different. It's different to substitute caramel chips for chocolate chips in a cookie recipe. It's also different to substitute wood chips for chocolate chips. One of those is a good kind of different, and one of them is not. Ultimately, my concern is not that Gamera Rebirth will be ruined because Seshita is involved. Instead, I worry that if it does wind up being bad, he'll point the finger at us again. That being said, Gamera Rebirth is already looking very different from the Polygon trilogy. I mean, you may remember that the first poster we got for Gamera Rebirth was this. A shot of Gamera, in silhouette, sure, but it's still Gamera. He's the first thing we saw. Whereas with Godzilla in the Polygon trilogy, the first image we got was this. An image with absolutely no Godzilla in it other than the word. And then, of course, one of the main posters also doesn't feature any Godzilla. People were trying very desperately to find Godzilla in these images, let me tell you, and they all successfully managed not to find him. All they managed to do was point at plants that they wanted to believe was Godzilla. Because how on earth could you make a movie poster for a Godzilla movie and not have Godzilla in it somewhere. But they managed it. So we've already got that much that's different. So I still want to believe that Gamera Rebirth has a chance. But I can't say I'm not concerned, given Seshita's track record. Not necessarily as a director, but as a director who responds in a particular way. So... That's ultimately my stance. I'm trying to remain optimistic about it, but I'm tempering that optimism with caution 
just in case. That being said, I still want Gamera Rebirth to be good. And I'm hoping it is. It looks like it has more potential than the Polygon Trilogy ever did. Hopefully, it lives up to that potential. At the very least, it has to live up to that potential. Ideally, it will exceed the potential. But as long as it just lives up to the potential, I will be fine. I have said potential way too many times just then, so maybe that's my cue to end this video now. You know where I stand at this point. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. Congratulations, you reached the end. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to consider supporting us on Patreon. Of course, the other way to support us is to go to Amazon and check out our books, Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, The Occult Mafia, Emerald of Maddox City, and Assorted Absurdities, Tales of Kaiju Punk, and other genres. Also, check the description for links to DeviantArt and other platforms we operate. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.